Hey everybody, welcome to another Goody Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we have the Kindle Paperwhite 2 and the Kobo Aura HD. So you can see that there's a little bit of a size discrepancy with uh, these devices. Uh, that's because the Kobo Aura HD 6.8 inches as opposed to the standard 6 inches, which makes up for the bulk of e-readers currently on the market. Let's give you some specs. 6.8 inches, 1440 by 1080. 1 gigahertz processor, uh, it's 4 gigs of storage and expandable memory. The Kindle Paperwhite 6 inches, 1024 by 768, a 1 gigahertz processor. It has 2 gigs of RAM, no expendable uh, memory via SD card in any way. These guys are very different. They, they kind of look the same from the front if you cover the logos. They're kind of that cookie cutter shape, but Kobo goes one step further to make this very nice chiseled back design and it's asymmetrical and it's quite nice they've since gotten rid of the um, design on the Kobo Aura the six inch reader uh, and they've made it a little more subtle but you can see here that there's the micro USB port there's the SD card expandable up to 32 gigabytes and there's a hard reset button at the top there is the power button and the glow light button that actually you need to press to turn the glow light on and off whereas on the Kindle the glow light is always going to be on no matter what you do. On the Paperwhite, uh, this is the Paperwhite 2 by the way, they did not change any of the external uh, housing or the casing from the Paperwhite 1. It is exactly the same in pretty much every way. Here is the logo on the back. You can see it's an embossed gloss logo that says Amazon. The first generation one says Kindle. And on the back here, we have the micro USB port on the bottom. Sorry. We have a uh, status indicator light and we also have a power button. And we're going to show you the back of the Kobo and the Kobo Arc. You'll see uh, that Kobo Aura. Kobo Aura, sorry. The, uh, the ridges have been reduced to give a more subtle look, whereas on the Kobo Aura HD, it's a lot more extreme. Yeah, so kind of going forward for all Kobo e-readers, this is sort of like the, the the vibe that they're going for. Instead of just like a flat back, which is sort of like the Kindle and 90% of other e-readers, they're kind of going for the, a really subtle asymmetrical look to it. So looking at the main user interface here, you can see with uh, the Kobo Aura HD that the home screen is kind of dynamic. Depending on what you've purchased and what you've done, that will be on the main screen. So you can see that we've opened up a book recently, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, so it's on the main screen. Kind of give you percentage read, previews. Uh, this is a, a new e-reader that we just basically took out of the box like an hour ago. Although yeah. we have reviewed it extensively in the past, so this is pretty well how it'll look by default. As you can see, Reading Life is more of their social media uh, outlet. You can kind of get a sense on your reading stats if you're into that sort of thing. And then you can kind of get awards and achievements, sort of like the Xbox kind of style of achievements where you could, um, depending on when you're reading or how much you've read, you could uh, win these kind of cool awards. Kind of give you an incentive to combat your friends and you could share all this stuff via social media. Um, so you can see that there is some differences here. Um, the front light on both are pretty different. Um, with the Kobo Aura HD, it actually has a button at the top that you have to press in order to turn the glow light on. And then you can hit uh, the glow button here to configure the brightness level. So you can see we have it max, and you can see that the screens look relatively blue. It's just because of the, the cameras and, and the, the studio lights that we have here. But to the naked eye, it's it's very, it's a, it's a white experience. Yeah, so you have um, different settings here. You actually have a max button on the Kindle Paperwhite. So even if you turn it to the maximum on the bar, you can press max to go the extra step. And um, if you go to one or off, it's never really truly off. It's always going to be there. So um, the Kobo Aura HD actually has the advantage to press and hold the button at the top, physically turn the glow light off entirely. Okay, so Kobo and Amazon have 
they're pretty well two of the leading companies out there in terms of international availability. You, it would be hard pressed to go a month without one company expanding to India or to like Japan or to like Portugal and things like that. So both of these companies. Uh, they sell ebooks and they're very international. So both of these e-readers, you can configure it so your home screen and all of your content is in a myriad of different languages. I think both of these support like 12 to 14 languages right out of the box. So of course we have them in English. Uh, what we're going to do is look at the e-reading experience because really that's why we're buying an e-reader here. So you can see with the 6.8 inch screen, you can fit more text on the screen, which it would definitely appeal to readers, but you kind of like lose a little bit of that pocket friendly nature with like a standard six inch device. Definitely. This is in a different category. It's it, it breaks the mold of the standard six inch screens because everything's six inch and uh, I don't think there is another 6.8 inch e-reader. So tapping the center of the screen on the Kobo and the top region of the screen on the Kindle will open up your settings and you can go to your text settings and change things around as you see fit. So you can see with Amazon they have sort of an indication on how big your text will look on the screen via some prompts here. Whereas with Kobo it's all controlled by slider bars. Right. You can change line spacing. You can change margins. You can see if we max the margins out to the left will show a lot more text on the screen. You also have justification and you got margins on the Kindle as well and everything changes live right before your eyes. Okay, so you can see that the Kindle <laughs> only has like six fonts whereas like uh, the Kobo Aura it's got uh, about 12 or so there, and you also have document default, which defaults it to the way that it was meant to be read. And if you're not happy with these fonts, Kobo actually allows you to sideload in your own font. So they have a, a font directory where you could like download any font you want from the internet, load them in, then once you sync your e-reader or reboot your e-reader, those fonts will actually be in your font category. Kobo also goes the extra mile and gives you a before and after shot of little more customization options. So you have sharpness, weight, font size, and you can change everything. Click apply, and it will now conform the entire book to those settings that you've chosen. Now you may ask, how is this useful? Well, this is primarily useful if you're reading in the dark with the front light on, because sometimes with fonts as they stand, the fonts may be a little bit lighter, and with the glow light on, it could have that washed out appeal. So this way you could make the fonts a little bit more bolder and then have a more customizable reading experience. So Amazon doesn't really allow you to do that, but then again, with the Amazon, there's not a lot of advanced features like that to confuse like your average user because Kindle's more of a you know an everybody device whereas Kobo really sort of abides by that principle but then it also appeals to like those really advanced users that demand a lot more customization. You can also long press on any word you see it opens up dictionary definitions on both from there you can go to the more section click highlight on the Kindle or simply click the little highlighter on the bottom. We're going to compare keyboards now by long pressing and making a note. So uh, as you can see here we've opened up both keyboards. So the good thing about the Kobo Aura HD is that you get a dedicated row for numbers which is awesome because you don't have to click the extra button to get into the numbers like the Kindle. However I think the Kindle's keyboard looks a lot better because they put some shading on the bottom of each key to make it look three-dimensional. Yeah the Kobo keyboard kind of just like runs together with like this gradiented grayscale. Right. They're both pretty responsive though in terms of um, typing. Yeah, let's try changing pages because, you know, obviously uh, we know in the, in the past with a lot of e-readers that you would turn a page and it would just give you a full uh, page refresh. So you can see that the, the Kindle Paperwhite 2 actually refreshes once or twice at the beginning of each chapter, but then you can go 10, 20 pages sometimes and it actually won't refresh. You see that there's a break there, but then we don't refresh every five pages. Whereas on the Kobo Aura, the, about every six pages the refreshes so. are a lot more common. So that was about four or five there. And um, what why they need to refresh on e-readers is because the 
e it's just the way e-ink displays itself sometimes you'll see extra staining of the previous pages or behind ghosting. yeah so it's just to kind of get rid of that and give you guys a fresh slate uh, one of the benefits of both of these devices is that you don't necessarily have to buy books from both of these companies in order to make highlights and annotations and look words up in the dictionary. It also works with side-loaded content as well. So if you don't want to buy a book from Kobo, you just want to download a bunch from the internet, no problem. You can still, everything that we showed you in terms of the flexibility and control, you can do that with side-loaded books. Same with the, the Kindle. If you download Mobi, PRC, AZW, or use a program like caliber to convert formats say like an epub book to like a moby book you still have access to everything the only thing that you don't have access to is x-ray which is uh, a fairly cool feature this will just basically show you people terms things in the book and how many times they're mentioned in the book so if you're juggling multiple novels you'll be able to catch yourself up with all these terms and characters okay so we've looked at the ebook experience how about the pdf experience because uh, pdfs they've been around for a long time and it's fairly easy to find a pdf on the internet whether it's a textbook that we're looking at now it's a textbook on a cellular biology which is fairly common for students and all that jazz so we'll start with the Kobo Aura HD. You actually don't have any pinch and zooming capabilities. What it does is just thinks you're turning a page. So you'll either have to double tap and it gets you to, oh, I've turned the page again. So that gets you to a, uh, a certain level of zoom. You can then move the page around and you'll see that you have a mini map, smaller display of where you are located on the page. You can then let go, it'll refresh and render, and then there you go. You also have options to turn into landscape, fit to height, fit to width, and you have your zoom bar, and this kind of takes the place of pinching and zooming with this zoom bar, but it's not too responsive, it's kind of slow, and it doesn't give you the flexibility of actually pinching and zooming. Whereas on the Kindle, you do have the ability to pinch and zoom. So you can see pinch and zoom you don't have any sort of indication on where you are on the page but you do get full control with just two fingers so it's a lot more of an advantage that the kindle has for reading pdfs it also has reflow so we're going to go to the full size page by zooming out and what we can do is select a body of text by double tapping and it actually has reflowed that body of text you can then long press on a word and it will highlight that word and you have all the same functionality as you would with an ebook you have translation share notes highlights translation is a cool feature because you can translate anything into any language you can see even complex characters like chinese we've translated it into that so you can see some of the different translation options here there's a lot you guys can see i'm long pressing here nothing comes up because Kobo doesn't have the functionality to deal with side loaded ebooks in terms of long presses. All right, so you can see that the Kindle allows a little bit more versatility in terms of being able to take notes, make highlights, uh, make flashcards and all this different type of stuff. But you can see that there there's low memory issues and this is really like a five meg file. And we found during a lot of our comparisons that Amazon has a hard time you know, with this. So know that if you're getting the Kindle Paperweight 2 and you're loading anything more than say like a five meg file, you're going to encounter a lot of memory limits. And this memory limits is not because the e-reader itself is full because really what we have like 10 books on here, <laughs> right? It you know, it shouldn't be killing the memory. I think it's like, uh, it's a RAM issue. Um, it just it has too little RAM for what it thinks it can do, and then you think you can pinch and zoom it to get to the full size, and it's like, oh, oh, I don't have enough memory, and then it shuts down. So we've never really had that problem with the Aura HD, so I kind of feel like with the PDF experience, they both do very different things, but I've never encountered a low memory issue on the Aura HD, but I think that the, you know, basically the, almost the one, one inch screen size difference. Right. 
makes a big difference because you know in essence it's seven inches this is only six inches so uh, a little bit more of a viewing area but you can't pinch and zoom so people who are used to tablets and smartphones may find themselves uh, having to adjust to the reader in a different way as whereas with the kindle paperwhite if you're used to pinching and zooming on any type of interactive device you'll feel right at home so the last thing we're going to look at really quick before we wrap up here is the storefront. You can see they show them in different ways. I think the Kobo looks more like an all-in-one storefront. It's got the cool carousel here, sections down below. You can go into categories from the home page or even up front here. So you can go into categories, recommended books, whereas Kindle, just it's super text heavy. You got to dive into the categories um, manually and you actually get... Uh, readings on how many books re are in each category though which is kind of cool now this is something where Kobo kind of is lacking you can see on the Kindle we have all this data all this information samples wish list buy customer reviews what customers bought star ratings other website editorial reviews on the Kobo all we really get is synopsis and then some details. There's no reviews, there's no star ratings, Not a lot of details. there's nothing really there. So it's very bare bones. You still get preview, still get buy now, still get add to wish list, but all there really is is a little synopsis and that's pretty much it. Yeah, you can see with the Kindle, everything's sort of vertical here. Whereas with the Kobo, you need to swipe. So you would never kind of know that there's more stuff unless right. you're really looking at that. I kind of wish they did more of like the vertical layout. And as you can see that Kobo used to pull all of its feeds from Goodreads for its ratings and reviews, but they eliminated that about a month ago and they have not re-implemented it. So you're not going to find any type of uh, user reviews or user ratings, no crowdsourced material at all. Whereas Amazon's been pretty well doing this on the web page from day one and and if you've ever looked at a book listing on the Kindle, you know, Amazon website, it's this is fairly accurate. You know, this almost looks like an e-ink version of like their website, but it's more customized for the six inch display. Uh, all in all, uh, both of these e-readers appeal to different people. I would say that the Kobo Aura HD, I think appeals to more of a person that wants more flexibility and control over loading in their own fonts, having more uh, options to customize like the, the you know, how the fonts look, how the ebook experience looks, and managing their device with Calibre. Uh, Kindle probably has a deeper uh, bookstore all in all in terms of quality of content. The book descriptions look a little bit better, though PDF experience overall is more tighter, but as you can see it's more prone to crash. It, you could customize libraries on these fairly easy. Uh, but you don't really have a lot of control over, you know, a lot of things. So we're not going to dive deep into like library customization or anything like that. Let's hear your thoughts. Both of these e-readers uh, are fairly new. They've only really both come out, you know, what, what, the Kindle Paperweight 2 just came out like a few weeks ago. Right. Aura HD has been around for a while. You can drop a comment on this video. Let us know what you think is the better device and the reasons why. And uh, we'll drop in from time to time and respond to comments. Uh, for all the latest news, previews, interviews, and industry-wide coverage, you can check out our main website at goodyreader.com. And for a review of the Kindle Paperweight 2 and the Kobo Aura HD, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.